so a little quadratics review. So one of the first things we need to look at is solution by factoring. Let's do the first one together. Let's do the first one together. What should I think of first when I look at solving this one by factoring? We've got x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. What should we look at first? The sign. Yeah, we can look at the sign here. What, if this is negative, what does that tell us? It tells us there's going to be x plus, and then there's going to be x minus. It tells us that. What do we look at next? We're going the other way. What can we tell from this number 30? So we take the number 30, we look for the factors of 30. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. Notice I'm counting at 1, 2, 3, 4, there isn't a 4, 5 until I get to the same. Be methodical. And then you look through these numbers, how do we pick the correct pair? How do we pick the correct pair? So this 30 comes over here. How do we pick the correct pair? Uh, then it's like equal to 1. Why do we want equal to 1? It's the middle thing. So next we look at this. Next we look at this. What number do we have here? We have minus 1. So we know that one of these is positive, one of these is negative. And we have to look to see which will have a sum equal to or a difference to 1. 6 and negative 5. So this comes from the minus 1. We can see that if we use a positive 5 and a negative 6, they'll add together to give minus 1. So these are our factors, 5 and minus 6. And then the last step is using the null product theorem, which basically says either x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0. And that's why the solutions always have the opposite signs. OK. Have a go now at the other two questions. Don't forget, you have to rearrange it to standard form first. So these other two, you're going to need to rearrange the standard form. Give you a couple of minutes for that. You can. Okay. So this first one, what do we have to do first? So we get x squared plus nine x plus twenty equals zero. Then what? What are the factors of twenty? Five and four. Five and four. What are the signs? Positive and positive. Why? Because this is positive, meaning, yeah, because they're both positive. This is positive, means they're both the same. This is positive, means it's positive. So we need 5 and 4. What are the solutions? Four. Okay. X equals minus 5, X equals minus 4. X equals minus 5, X equals minus 4. All right. C is a bit trickier to solve by factoring. We need to use the conjugate rule. x plus b, x minus b equals a minus a squared minus b squared. So if this is a squared minus b squared, if this is a squared, what is a? 5, five what? X so a is 5x. If this is b squared, what is b? 4. It's going to be both. So we get 5x plus 4, 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. What are the solutions for x here? What are the solutions for x? How do we find the solutions? How do we find the solutions? How do we find the solutions? Flip the 
That's a shortcut when we say flip the sign. When it's like this, you can't do that. Null product theorem says either this bracket is equal to zero or this bracket is equal to zero in order to have a zero here. So we get 5x plus 4 equals zero and 5x minus 4 equals zero. Then we have to rearrange. This is going to give us x is equal to minus 4 over 5 and this is going to give us x is equal to 4 over 5. These are our two solutions. You need to review solving equations by factor. This is going to be a major component on the semester exam. Guaranteed. This is the most important routine that we learn on IM2. It's a basis for the whole first semester for IM3. IM3 extended, you have to know the more advanced techniques. So you'll have to hit the floor. You have to do your summer learning if you're moving into up to extend. Second, the second thing to look at is the discriminant. Does anybody remember what the discriminant is? Felicity. Sorry, let me take Felicity. You have it. Just show what I do. Go on. So let's start off with if ax squared plus bx plus c, then it implies that the discriminant is equal to what? May, that's all right. No. B squared minus 4ac. B squared minus 4ac. Often writing delta equals b squared minus 4ac on, such, on some of these questions, like how many real solutions it has, that's the method one. That's the method one. Putting the values into the formula to get you the method one. So we need to. We need to say that the discriminant is equal to, what's the value of B going to be? Six. Six. So six squared minus four. What's the value of A? Two. What's the value of C? Negative ten. So notice the use of brackets. For, e, for A, B, and C, the brackets are important. It'll help you get the minus signs right, particularly if the b is negative and you've got to square it. Remember that with our calculator, with our calculator, minus 5 squared is wrong if you're trying to square negative 5. Remember with our calculator, order of precedence, it will do the square first, then the negative. You have to put the brackets in. So this is why I'm writing it up with the brackets like this. Okay, we can put this into our calculator, or we can do it by hand. So we get 36, 2 times, 2 times 4 is how much? 8 times 10. Is it going to be positive or negative? Positive. Well, so what is the value of the discriminant? 116. B. How many real solutions does the equation have? Why? Because it's positive. Two real solutions. Don't forget the little table. If the discriminant is positive, two real. If the discriminant is zero, one real. If the discriminant is negative, no real. Okay, take a note down of this.
Adam, take a note down of this. Okay, last bit. In this question, we have the more open, we have the more open term solve. We have to solve. We don't have to solve by factoring, we can. We can use a variety of techniques. I'm going to run through the three main techniques quickly here for you. Um, so, the first one, we need to solve this equation. We can't solve an equation until it's in standard form. So we rearrange to 4x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Put it in standard form. At this point, you can use the quadratic formula. Notice that we have an a term which is larger than 1. This type of equation we looked at in the extended part of the course. And only kids going into extended need to be able to solve this one without a calculator. For our semester exam, we'll have our calculator. So the routine you should use is you pull up your calculator. Does anyone remember the cheat code? Menu 3, 3, 1. So menu 3, 3, what is the cheat code? It pulls up this, and we can type in our A, tab, B, tab, C, and enter. It's, it's empty. Somebody's stolen the answers. What, what does that mean? That means there's no answers. No. No real solutions. So this is an answer to a question sometimes. With, when that pops up, I would just double check that I'm not messing up. So should it be minus 5? Should it be plus 6? Yes. Did I enter them correctly? Yes. Verify first before going for your no real solutions. And you won't get more than one question in the semester exam which has no real solutions. I've seen some people answer it three times. No real solutions. No real solutions. I'm, like I'm never going to get three. <laughs> no real solution. One at the moment. All right, let's try it again. No, let's try a different technique. Look at this next one. What's missing here? The x. The x is missing. So typically, if the x is missing, we can solve using square roots. Is it if the x is missing, we can often solve with no solutions. And you want to, with these type of equations, you want to head for the characteristic equation x squared equals some number. Can we rearrange the equation to that form? What will we get? Oh. 
x squared equals 25. So we can square root both sides. x equals plus minus the square root of 25. x equals minus 5. x equals 5. Okay, our last technique is C. What should we do for C? Sorry? Yeah, no. Don't expand the brackets and go to standard form for this one. Don't expand. The whole point when solutions by factoring is to get it into factored form. Once you've got it into factored form, you can solve. So look at this equation here. Look at this equation here. Once we've got it in that form, we pull out two equations that look like this. Both bracket equal to zero. That's the technique you should use immediately here. So you go in the wrong direction on this, and you can waste a lot of time. You go straight to you go straight to two x minus five equals zero, and x plus one equals zero. What are the solutions now? X equals 5 over 2. X is equal to negative 1. Okay, that's it for today. That's a quick run through of the main uh, techniques and quadratics we need to revise. So have a go now at your quadratics review quiz.